going to flow right into the word uh, in this encounter. Somebody say, it's springtime. Come on, I, I want you to scream it out. Say, it's springtime. Spring One more time. Say, it's springtime. Spring That's my message that I, I want to deliver on today. God gave me a word, and I, I believe it's a prophetic word, meaning it, it is a word that's going to speak directly into somebody's life today. Listen, it might not hit everybody, but it's going to hit somebody in the room today. It's springtime. Some of y'all are saying, wait a minute, Pastor B done lost his mind. I know, I know the weather is a little bit warmer outside today, but doesn't Pastor B know that springtime doesn't officially start until uh, March 20th or March 21st? Hey, Pastor B, don't you, don't you need to get your calendar right? It's not springtime just yet. But as I was praying, I was praying and I was seeking the Lord a couple of weeks ago. Uh, as I was in prayer and preparation, the Lord said, it's springtime. Now, it wasn't like today then. When, when the Lord said it's springtime to me, it was in the middle of February. It was about 20-something degrees outside. There were flurries coming out of the sky, and the Lord said it's springtime. And I said, wait a minute, God. It's, a, it's the middle of February. It's cold outside. It's not spring. And, and the Lord began to help me understand that's not what he meant. The Lord said, it's, it's springtime. And, and I, I began to ask the Lord, what, what does it mean that it's, it's springtime? And the Lord took me to a passage of Scripture that for some might be familiar. It's in Isaiah chapter 43. Uh, you can pull it up on your phone or it will appear on the screen. Uh, Isaiah 43 and 19. This is where God is speaking to his people. And he says these words, forget the former thing. Do not dwell on the past. Then he says, I am doing a new thing. Y'all hear it? Then he says this. This is, this is where he caught me. He says, now it springs up. Then he said, it's springtime. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. He said, it's, it's springtime. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? And as the Lord spoke that that word to me, I, I then had to press in a little bit more and say, God, what do you mean? What do you mean that it's, it's springtime? What do you mean by, by these words? And, and I want to share with you today part of what God began to speak to my spirit as he began to help me understand what it means that it's springtime, that we're in a, a springtime season. No, not a season uh, on your calendar, but a season in the spirit where God is saying that this is a season where things are going to spring up, ideas opportunities are going to spring up in your life and part of what I want to do is open your eyes that you might see what I'm bringing up in this season come on say it's springtime it's springtime it's springtime God, God began to give me this, this revelation that it was springtime. It was springtime. And, and to put it in context, God showed me. He said, he told me to turn to Genesis. And I went to Genesis. And there in Genesis, it says, as long as the earth endures. Genesis chapter 8. The scripture says, seed time and harvest time will never end. As long as the world that we live in is here, there will always be a seed time where, where farmers and others are planting seeds, putting seeds in the ground. And, and there will always be seeds that come off of the fruit in trees. And then, then because those seeds get planted in the ground, it means that there must be a cycle where there will be harvest time. If there is a seed time, then there will be a harvest time as long as as the earth endures, seed time and harvest time won't cease. Then the Lord began to show me that, that because there is a, a harvest time, there is also then a time of, of pruning, a time where, where things that have harvested or are harvesting need to be cut back need to be cut back so that they can grow more. This is where Jesus would say in John chapter 15, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he cuts it off. But every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that it will produce more fruit. 
And so part of what God began to speak to me about, he said, Brian, there is, there is seed time and there is harvest time and there is, there is pruning time, but there's also springtime. And so I want to I talk to you all a little bit today about springtime and what, what this may mean for your life. I believe God wants to speak to, to some folks specifically today. And you may say, well, pastor, that's not me in this season. Well, I dare you to take this word and put it in your pocket and hold it for a day because there is a springtime coming in your life. There is a springtime that's coming in your life where God is going to break forth. What is, what is springtime, Pastor Brian? Springtime is when the, the hardened ground gets softened up to be able to produce what could not be produced before. My God. Woo. Y'all ain't even saying that to me. I'm preaching already. What is, what is springtime? Springtime is when God releases rain that softens up the soil so that what could not come out before now can sprout up. Springtime, springtime is the time where everything that was once holding back a breakthrough can't hold the breakthrough back any longer. My God. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't even, y'all ain't, I, I'm sorry, I got to calm down because I'm only at the beginning. But, but, but God wants you to understand, he wants us to understand that as it is in the natural, so it oftentimes also is in the spiritual. So just like in the earth, there is hardened ground and in the springtime, the grass begins to grow again and the leaves come out on trees and those things that were being hindered from breaking forth, now all of the sudden begin to blossom and begin to bloom. God says, I want you to know that that it's like that in the spirit and I hear the Lord saying I don't know who this is for but I hear God saying to somebody in the house that it is springtime. Everything that has been holding you back everything that has been pushing you down everything that you felt like you could not break through God says it's springtime and there are things in you that are going to begin to bubble up, that are going to begin to break through the surface because it's springtime. Yeah, I heard somebody say, I receive it. I receive it. That, that's, the, that's the heart that we've got to have when it's, God, I receive it. I receive springtime in my life. I receive, Lord God, you giving me the ability and you giving me the power and you giving me the grace to break through that which has been holding me down. It's springtime. It, it, it's springtime. It's springtime. And, and in order for us to, to grasp the fullness of, of springtime, I, I just want to walk you through just briefly seed time, harvest time, pruning time, and then springtime. Are, are you with me? Are you with me? Seed time. Seed time. We're going we're gonna to start with, with seed time. Seed time is that season where you are planting in different areas. Seed time, as, as a farmer plants seed, they understand that the harvest is not going to come immediately, but I'm planting seeds in hope for what is coming later on. And so seed time is when I am intentionally putting things or focusing on certain things that I believe are going to bring forth a harvest. A farmer does not in seed time put seed in the ground and say, I don't think anything is coming from that. But a farmer specifically says, I am taking intentional measures to sow seed because I am looking for a certain harvest. If you've ever been on a plane, sometimes if you're on a plane and you're, you're looking down where you're riding over a certain area, a certain farmland, or you see things from a higher perspective, you can see sometimes the very segmented and disciplined nature of farming because you see the rows in which seeds have been sown in order to produce the fruit or the harvest that will come. And so God wants us to understand that oftentimes in our lives, we must go through periods of seed time, which is intentional, disciplined, focused sowing in certain areas of our lives. Anybody ever been in, in seed time? Any, anybody ever been in seed time in your life? You see, so, sometimes, sometimes we got to understand as believers, there is, 
always times where we should be sowing into things. We should be sowing into our faith and sowing into our families. But there are also very specific times where God says, I want you to sow seed in these specific areas because that's where I want to bring about a harvest. And during seed time, again, I'm not yet looking for the harvest because I know what God is calling me to do is sow seed. And sometimes where we get it twisted is we start looking for the harvest in seed time. And we lose our focus on what God is calling us to do in the sowing of the seed because God said, right now it's not harvest time. Right now it's time to sow the seeds. This is, this is like if you've ever, if you've ever been in school or, or you've been working on a degree or working on a certification or in a training program at, at a certain space, right? When you're in that program, what you realize is I'm here to sow seed. I, I'm not here yet to reap the harvest from what I'm doing. Right now, I'm in seed sowing mode. And oftentimes, we can miss on the power of the harvest later because we get so focused into the future on the harvest that we don't put forth the right effort where we should be sowing the seed. My God, I need y'all to get a hold of this. I don't know who this is for right here, but God says to somebody, somebody in the room, you in in seed time, and in your seed time, I need you to focus on sowing. Stop worrying so much about reaping all of the harvest that I want for your life in five years or maybe later this year, but right now, I need you to learn how to sow the seed because if you get into a space where you sow the seed well, the harvest is guaranteed. My God, if you ever get to a place where you learn how to sow the seed well, the harvest is guaranteed. This was, this was, this was the, the, the difficult part sometimes about, about being, being in college and being broke, right? <laughs> or be, being in some kind of program and being broke and you're struggling because you know my parents or I, I sent myself here to sow some seed, but I really need some harvest. <laughs> I, I need some dollars. I need some change. I need some breakthrough. But God says, I got you in a seed time season. And if you can receive the benefits and the focus and the discipline of the seed time season, there will be a harvest in the future. Somebody say seed time. You've got to focus on on seed time. And in this seed time, for many people, the pandemic has been a season of seed time. Ah. After, after we, we've gotten over uh, the, the, the shock uh, and the frustration of being in the house uh, as we've been dealing with the, with the grief of, of lost loved ones and the grief of, of lost opportunities, there's then been a shifting for some folks in the house where you said, you know what, this is actually seed time. This is a time where I don't have all of the same distractions that I used to have. I don't have all of the same things pulling on me that I used to have. And there are some folks who during the pandemic have sown seeds in major ways that now in this later season, a a year later or two years later, are reaping some harvest because they made the pandemic a seed time. Some people have invested in in new hobbies or or new habits or they've begun to lay the foundation for new ministries or they've begun to lay the foundation for the book that you were working on because what you realize is I'm going to take advantage of a seed time because as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest time won't cease. And the last thing you want to have is a lot of seed left over when it's no longer seed time. <laughs> so there's seed time. Then there is harvest time. Because at harvest time, this is the time where you begin to gather up the fruits of your labor. A friend of mine <laughs> who realized that the pandemic was seed time likes to invest in, in, in stocks, and, and, and he didn't have a, a ton, ton of money, but he realized, unlike some of us, he realized this is a time for seed time. 
And so he began to put a, a, a couple, couple dollars here, a couple dollars there during the pandemic because he realized that, you know what, as all of these stocks are dropping, this is the time for me to sow some seeds. Now, I, I didn't realize all that he realized. I didn't have uh, some of the extra money to put into it. But after about a year into the pandemic, he said, let me, let me show you how much money I made during this seed time. Because when you realize that it's a seed time and you're disciplined enough to sow seeds in that season, then there is a guaranteed harvest that comes. And so he began, to, he began to talk about the harvest that he had. And God wants us, you and I, to understand that there is a guaranteed harvest in our lives. And my excitement during the harvest is always connected to my diligence during the seed time. I'm going to say that again. Your excitement during harvest time is connected to your diligence during seed time. And sometimes that's why, that's why some people can be, you look at people and you say, why are they so hype? Why are they so hype? Why are they always on 10? And sometimes it's because they were so diligent during the time of sowing seed. And now because they were so diligent during that seed time, when harvest time comes around, they are ready to receive the harvest that God has in store for them. You, you, ever, you, ever, seen, you ever seen somebody uh, who worked a lot of overtime and they know their check is coming? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Chelsea, you with me? You, you've been there where, where, where you, and maybe it's you, you, you ever worked a lot of overtime and, and you knew, you knew, man, I got, I'm, I got to get my check. I, I worked, I worked in, the, in the mall in, in, when I was in high school and I, I remember, I remember I, I was the one put me down for New Year's Day. I'm, I will come in on New Year's Day. I will come in on the day. Whenever time and a half was available, I was going to be in there because I recognized that, that if I did a certain level of sowing or a certain level of pouring in in the seed time, that there was going to be a greater harvest available. And God says, as long as my world endures in the natural, there will be seed time and harvest. And in the spiritual, there will be seed time and harvest time. And for some people who have been sowing seeds faithfully during the pandemic, we're coming now into a time for some of harvest. There's seed time. There's harvest time. But then there's also pruning time. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Pruning time is not our favorite season. Again, Jesus says in John chapter 15, every branch in me that bears fruit, I prune it. The Father prunes it so that it, be, it will be more fruitful. This is the season where God is refining you. For some people, the pandemic has been a time of seed time. For others, it's been a time of harvest. But for many of us, I would, I would venture to say it's been a pruning time. Anybody felt like during this season, God has been pruning you? Well, what happens in pruning is, is, is the gardener cuts things away from a leaf or from something that's growing that may seem like they look good but the gardener knows if I cut this off it will produce more fruit and in the spiritual what God does in the pruning season is he takes from us things that we thought we needed in order to increase our reliance on him and our growth in him Woo. Anybody ever been in a pruning? Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Anybody been in a, a pruning? Somebody might be in a pruning season right now. A pruning season is where, where God is able to use things that actually hurt you to also help you. Woo. Because the, 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 cutting, the cutting of the branch or the removal of that which you thought you needed, it hurts you. But this is where God says, not everything that hurts you is bad for you. Oh, my God. 
Not, ev- not everything that, that hurts us is bad for us because oftentimes there is a pruning that is taking place. Now, don't miss me now. There are some things, there are some pains that God has not destined for you and I to go through. There are some issues in relationships and in families that God has said, firm up your boundaries because you don't need to experience that. That's not for my son. That's not for my daughter. That's not on my agenda for their lives. Oh, but there are other things where God says this might hurt a little bit. I took my kids to the doctors and they had to get their 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 flu shots and the doctor always says or the aide that comes in always says this might hurt a little bit but what the doctor knows is that even though it hurts you a little it's going to help you more than it hurts you and God says there are some things that I will do in a pruning season that you will not like, you may not enjoy them. Oh, but what I'm bringing out of you from it is going to bless your life. It's going to bless your family. It's going to bless your children. And so God says, sometimes I've got to put you in a pruning place because you didn't realize that the removal of this would actually make you grow more. What happens in in the pruning process is that some things are cut off because it's actually going to increase the growth. And God says to somebody, part of what I'm doing in your life is I'm bringing about a growth spurt you didn't even know you had coming. NBA, NBA basketball, former NBA basketball player, uh, played next to Michael Jordan all those years. Uh, many would argue that without this man, Michael Jordan would not have all of the championships that he has. Michael Jordan is great. He is a singular talent. But many will say if it had not been for Scottie Pippen, who played right next to Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan would not have six NBA championships and six NBA, NBA MVPs. He needed a wingman. He needed somebody who was right next next to him who will be able to push him to greatness. Why are you bringing up Scottie Pippen, Pastor B? I'm bringing up Scottie Pippen because, interestingly, little known fact is that when Scottie Pippen was 19 years old in college, he was 6'1". 6'1", 19 years old, and most people at that point thought that Scottie Pippen had reached his final height. They thought that he was as tall as he was going to be. He was 19 years old, and by, for the most part, most folk don't grow that much after they hit 19 years old. But between his 19th birthday and his 20th birthday, Scottie Pippen grew from 6'1", to 6'8". He grew grew seven inches in about a year's time because there was an unexpected growth spurt that happened. And God says, some of what I'm doing in somebody's life is I'm pruning some things and I'm cutting some things off because you thought you were fully grown, my God. You thought you were fully developed. You thought you had everything that you needed, but I got a surprise growth spurt for you. I've got a surprise development period for you, and I want to see you grow more than you even thought was possible, my God. Oh, we, we, don't, we don't love, I, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't love the pruning time, but God says it's in the pruning where I grow you, where I produce more fruit, where I get more out of you than you expected. It's pruning time for some folks. It's, it's pruning time. And in, in, this, in, this, in this pandemic, as we've, as we've lost loved ones, as, as we've wrestled with, with anxieties, we've wrestled with different thoughts and different fears, God says, part of what I'm doing is, is I'm pruning you. You see, the reason why the pandemic is still here is not just because the devil is busy. Now, he is busy, you know what I'm saying? But it's not just because the devil is busy. Sometimes it's because God says, I'm not done pruning yet. Woo! You see, because that thing, that thing you, saw, you saw how it hit us last year. We thought we, was, we thought we was on the way out, and we were in the summertime. Everything was good. We thought we was on the way out, but, but then all of a sudden the thing spiked back up again. And, and some would say, well, that's just the enemy. He don't want us to be, get, the, he don't want us to get out. He doesn't want us to grow. He doesn't want us to be back in these spaces. But I have to wrestle with what part of it is the Lord saying, I allowed this because there were some things that I still needed to work on in some 
some people's hearts. There are some things that I'm still developing in this pruning season. Some things God is still trying to do in us in a pruning season. Because there is seed time, there's harvest time, and there's some pruning time. But part of what God gave to me for the day and what God brought me to this space was he said, I need people to hear that it's springtime. It's springtime. It's springtime. It's springtime. And springtime is the season where everything that's been holding them is going to be broken through. Let me pull up the text again. I'm going to give you a couple things and I'm out your way. What happens at, at springtime? Isaiah 43 and 19, the Lord says, forget the former things. I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Now it springs up. God says, do you not perceive it? He's saying, can you see it? And part of what God does, and I, I believe part of what God is doing in this springtime season in the lives of many, whoever it is I'm assigned to talk to today, I believe God is opening up your eyes. That, that's, the, that's the first thing I'm lifting up today. God is opening up our eyes because he wants us to have a new perspective and a new revelation in this season. He's saying, do you not see some of the things that are breaking forth? Because part of the reason why we don't get to where God wants us to be is not because the doors have not been opened, but oftentimes because we weren't looking in the right direction. This is why the scriptures would say in Proverbs 29 and 18 that where there is no vision, the people perish because where I am going is directly connected to what I am able to see. This is then also why in Ephesians chapter 1, when Paul is praying for the church at Ephesus, he says, I pray that the eyes of their heart might be opened because Paul is saying what's going to transfer or what's going to change their whole destiny is what they are able to see. And I hear the Lord saying for somebody, this is a season where I am opening up your eyes. This is a season where I am removing the blinders. I am shifting you so that your perspective will change. And those things, those details that you have missed in the past, you will not miss on this go round because I know it's springtime in your life. Is there anybody here who will trust God enough to say, God, I trust you to open up my eyes. I trust you to help me see what I have not seen before, that I might get to the place that you have destined me to be. Why? Because in springtime, God opens up our eyes. God says, I want to I want to open up, I want to open up your eyes in this season. This is a season where my brother, my sister, he's opening up your eyes so that you can see what is possible. But not only am I opening up your eyes, but I'm also releasing resources. Somebody say, he's a provider. Come on, say, he's a provider. I'm right there. I'm right there in the text. Put that verse back up on the screen. Uh, he says, do you not perceive it? Then he says, I am making a way in the wilderness. And I am putting streams in the wasteland. Nobody in their right mind would have made a decision on their own to go through the wilderness. The wilderness was specifically seen as a place of death where a lot of folks would not make it through extended periods of time. But God says, what I am doing is I am putting resources in places where people don't even expect them. My God, ah, I, I need y'all to see this thing. He's saying, I am opening up opportunities and resources is for my sons and my daughters in spaces where they would not expect them to be because part of what I want for their lives requires them to rely on my supply. My God, 
my God. And I just want you to hear this thing. I know, I know you may not see it already, but God says it's springtime. And he says, I need you to open up your eyes because part of the reason to open up your eyes is to also see the resources that I am making available for you in this season. Now, God says there will be resources that open up to you. There will be spiritual resources. There will be financial resources. There will be human resources. There will be folks that come around and network and connect with you and bring to you to spaces that you would not have had access to on your own. But God says, I am creating the resources. Why? Because it's springtime. It's time for certain things to spring up. And God says, because it's my vision, it'll be my provision. My God. Y'all, y'all heard that thing before? That's how, the, that's how the old preacher would say it. They would say, his vision, his provision. They would say, his will is his bill. Come on. <laughs> y'all, y'all ain't with me now. He said, they would say, it's his choice, it's his invoice. <laughs> I'm killing myself right now, but, but, but look, I'm laughing. I'm laughing because it's funny, but it's true. Because God says, when I call you to something, when I open up a door, I'm not asking you to have all the supply. I'm not asking you to have all the resources. He says, I am the God who supply all of your needs according to my riches in glory. I'm the one who are my God. I'm the one who's going to bring the right people to the project at the right time with the right dollars. I'm going to be the one who brings about the surplus at the end of the balance sheet. I'm going to be the one who makes the ends meet and then meets you with a little bit more because I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I own the hills and I own the valleys. God says, I want to meet you with resources, but you've got to open your eyes in springtime. It's, it's springtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother, he's receiving it right now because it's, it's springtime. And God says, when I give you a vision, I'm going to provide. I'm going to provide that you might be able to get to where I've destined you to be. In springtime, in springtime, in springtime, I, I open up your eyes so that you'll be able to see the opportunities that are on the horizon. You'll be able to see some of the things that I'm calling you into, but then I don't leave you by yourself because I provide the resources. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24 says, faithful is he who calls you and he will also bring it to pass. Don't miss that thing. This is one of my favorite verses in all of scripture. Faithful is he who calls you and he will bring it to pass. That means that the one who has called you to it is the one who will provide for you in the process. That means that the one who is faithful enough to call you there is also the one who is faithful enough to provide everything you need to navigate through that terrain. I don't know who this is for, but God says, I need you to understand that this is a season where I'm going to help you see everything I am able to provide because it's springtime and it's going to take courage to step out but it's also then going to take faith to trust that I will meet you as you step your eyes will see but your heart has to trust he says in the text in the text he says I'm making a way in the wilderness, streams in the desert. Then I want you to pull that, pull that scripture back up because it goes on to talk about what happens when he makes this way. He says, verse 20, you pull up verse 20. He says, the wild animals honor me. <laughs> the jackals and the owls because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. <laughs> He's saying, my creation knows how to respond to my provision. <laughs> He said, he said, they know how to respond to my provision, and I would not 
call them to a place where I would not provide for them. The wild animals, they honor me because they know I provide. Keep that, that text back up. We got to go, go down just a little bit further. It says, they, they, they honor me because I provide water in the wilderness, streams in the wasteland. Then he says this, to give drink to my people, my chosen. Verse 21, the people I formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise. I need you to hear this. this is, I'm, I'm telling you this and I'm out your way. God says it's springtime. It's springtime. This is a season where you're going to be able to break through that things that have been holding you back, things that have been holding you down. You're going to be able to break through. Things are going to begin to come through the surface, the fallow ground. And I'm going to open up your eyes so you will see the new opportunities. You'll see the new ways that I'm making. You'll see the new mindsets that you have to adopt. Hear me clear. Sometimes part of what I'm enabling you to see is not a new physical thing over there, but it's a new spiritual thing in here. It's something I'm doing in your mind. You'll be able to see the new habits that are now a part of your life. And as God is saying this, he's saying, listen, I'm opening your eyes. I'm providing the resources. But then essentially he's saying, I am waiting for your response because I'm not going to force you into it. He said, I'm not going to force you into it, but I'm awaiting your response. If you'll put that, y'all got to gotta put that thing back up there for me real quick. That last part, that last part of verse 21, it says that I, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Part of what he's saying there, the may proclaim my praise is they have an option. They have an option on how they will respond to the ways I made in the wilderness. The context of this passage is that the people of Israel have been in captivity. They have literally been in slavery, in bondage. And God is saying, I am opening up some new opportunities, but they have to respond. I'm not going to force them into a breakthrough. I'm not going to force them into freedom. I'm going to open their eyes. I'm going to release their, these resources, but then they have got to respond. And I want you to know today, God says, the ball is in your court. God says, it's your turn. Look at somebody, tell them, it's your turn. God says, I'm a faithful God. I provide the resources. I'm a faithful God. I open the doors. I'm a faithful God. I make ways out of no way. But at some point, I'm going to step back and allow you to do what I've called you to do. I'm going to allow you to walk in your calling. I'm going to allow you to be who I've called and created you to be. So I will let you proclaim my praise. The wild animals get it. The jackals and the owls get it. But will you get it? Will you step up and walk in the authority, in the calling in the faith that I have placed on the inside of you. It's springtime. It's springtime. That means that not only are things going to spring up, but that people are going to spring up. There's going to be a new, my God, there's going to be a new dimension of you that springs up in this season. Did you realize that you are not the fullness of you just yet because you have not submitted completely to all that God wants to do in you, but when you submit completely to all that God wants to do in you, uh, there are new levels uh, that come out of you. Uh, I, I used to not like the phrase, uh, new year, new you, uh, but I began to understand uh, that sometimes I need to be new. Uh, sometimes I need to shift some things. Uh, sometimes I need to change some ways I operate, that there ought to be a newness uh, to how I am walking in this season. And God says when it's springtime, I'm going to spring up in your mind. I'm going to develop you mentally. I'm going to spring up in your habits. I'm going to develop you emotionally. I'm going to spring up in every area of your life if you will begin to trust in me. Trusting in my word and trusting in in my voice, God says, 
I'm opening up your eyes because it's springtime. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about the weather. I'm not talking about the temperature. But there is something different in the atmosphere. that things are going to be produced in you and out of you in this springtime season. And I'm looking for your response. If you're here and you know, you know it's a, it's a springtime season for you. It, it, it's a time of, of breaking through the 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 fallow ground, a time of breaking through what's been holding you back. I just want to pray over you. I just want to pray over you, my brother, my sister. If you stand where you are, I just want to pray over you. If if it's a a springtime season, springtime season, springtime season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Right where you are. Right where you are. Right where you are. Ah. Yeah. It's a springtime season. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you. For these, your sons and daughters, right where they are. And we're standing, Lord God, in a place of faith. Trusting you, Lord God, that in this season, you're you're doing something different in their heart. You're doing something different in their lives. I thank you, Lord God, that you are opening eyes and that you are releasing resources. But Father God, right now, I pray, I pray, Lord God, for the faith to respond to the moves you're calling them to make, to the person that you are calling them to be. Father, I pray, I bind anything that's not like you, Lord God, that would call them or or try to cause them to shrink back into what they used to be or the ways they used to operate in. Lord God, and I speak faith over your sons and your daughters. Right now, Lord God, in this moment of prayer, Lord God, I pray, I pray, Lord God, that everything that you are birthing on the inside of your sons and your daughters, Orders, Lord God, would be uh, would be brought to full term, Lord God, that it would then begin to spring up, Lord God. It would spring out, Lord God, that there would be greater ministry, greater faithfulness, greater parenthood, greater manhood, greater womanhood. I thank you, Lord God, that in every area of their lives, you're going to show yourself faithful, God. Father, I pray, I pray now, Lord God, for the courage, the courage to continue to stand faithful when the obstacles come. For Father, I recognize that there will be obstacles, there will be challenges, there will be issues that rise up in this season. But Father, we are trusting in you. I'm trusting you right now, Lord God to bring out of your sons and daughters what only you can. I'm praying, Lord God, that you would send a fresh wind of faith. I pray you'd send a fresh wind of your grace, a fresh wind of your favor in the name of Jesus. Move by your spirit, Lord. And have your way. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, I receive it. Come on, I receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise God like you receive it today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if you're here today 
you've heard this, this word, you realize that part of what it means for it to be springtime is you got to respond to God's call on your life. Part of that response is by giving your life to the Lord or getting connected to a church family where you can grow, where you can be all that God has called you to be. If you're here today and you're not connected to a church, you've never given your life to the Lord, wherever you are, God says, my arms are open, awaiting your response. God is a faithful father who continues to love, continues to provide. He says, I'm, I'm not judging you for what you've done before. I'm inviting you into the best relationship you could ever have. Our Fresh Start team is here at the front. If you want to get connected or give your life to the Lord, I invite you to step out on faith that God might have his way. Maybe, maybe you're watching online and you want to respond to to this call, to this opportunity. You can just type the word connect right there and somebody will respond to you. There's a prayer line number, 1-800-759-1970. Somebody will connect with you right now, real time. If you just need prayer, call that number and they'll meet you at the point of your need. song says, my response is, hallelujah. God, you're my redeemer. So I declare these words, hallelujah. That means, God, you're, you're the one that's worthy of my praise. You're the one who saved me. You're the one who's healed me. You're the one who's covered me. And so I respond in your presence. You're my redeemer. Hallelujah. Hey, come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Bless you, my brother. Good to see you, my sister. I saw, I saw y'all back there talking it out. But God brought you here today on purpose. Hallelujah. So I just want to pray for you as you come. It's to somebody else says, hey, today is our day. Today's my day to step out on faith, to make a decision, to get connected. I told you last week that you can't fight this on your own. The Christian walk was never meant for you to be by yourself. That's why in Genesis, God says it's not good for man to be alone. That's not just talking about marriage. That's talking about community. The community of faith is critical. If you're here today and you want to get connected to a community of faith, we invite you. Don't delay. Today is your day. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Look, you got a lot of, a lot of new family. And that new family is going to stretch their hands towards you as we pray for them that have come. God, we just come right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God for their faithful response, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for your calling on their life. I thank you that you are doing a new thing, my God. I just feel that real strong right now for you, my brother, my sister, that God is doing a new thing. I don't know uh, what's been the old thing. I don't know what's been the former thing, but God says there is a new thing that he is developing in you too. There's a new uh, spiritual foundation, hallelujah, thank speak, Lord, that he wants to build in you. A spiritual foundation that, that may not be familiar, oh, but it's powerful, and it will be a foundation for years to come. God says that the, wow, God says that, that your, your future is predicated on the strength of this foundation. And so even now, the steps that you have taken are steps in the direction of a firm foundation. God says, if you remain in this way, I will do in and through you together and individually more than you can ask or imagine. A, a new thing, says God, but you must persist in the new thing. 
you must persist in the new thing to reap the fullness of its benefit. Mm. God says that this is not just a moment for you, but it's the beginning of movement. That there is, there is movement that is necessary in certain directions to get you to where you're called to be. And this is a step in that direction. Mm. I, I sense the Lord saying that there, there will be very clear resistance to this movement. Resistance to the spiritual direction and foundation that you are seeking to build. There will be very clear resistance to it. But if you trust in God and trust in the firm foundation, you will overcome the resistance by faith. You will overcome the resistance in accountability. You will overcome the resistance by receiving the counsel of those who have walked this way before. I hear the Lord saying that that counsel, that support is going to be critical in this season of, of your, your relationship, of your walk together, that there will be others necessary to pour into you. And it will be difficult because pride will say, we've got this. Pride will say, we know exactly what to do. But the Spirit of the Lord says that there is wisdom in counselors. The Spirit of the Lord says that, that you two can only walk together if you agree. The Spirit of the Lord says that a quarter of three strands is not easily broken. And so we thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do and the way you're going to grow them and grow us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise. If y'all will go with our Fresh Start team, Pastor Will. Amen. Hey, how y'all doing? It's good to see y'all. It looks like my, my brothers had some desire to make a move. Well, we're going to trust God as well over you all. I don't know what the Lord is doing, but we're going to have some conversation and see how God is moving. God, we just trust you. We trust you, Lord God, for these uh, that have come. We thank you, Lord God, for uh, the ways that you are making, even in the lives of these young ones. I thank you, Lord God, for my sister, Lord God, who, who faithfully seeks to shepherd and cover them, Lord God, even through difficult times. I pray now, Lord God, that you would give clarity, Lord God, that you would give increase, that you would give resources in this season that she might be and they might be all that you have called them to be. I pray, Lord God, yeah, God, yeah, Lord, for a strong connection. Yes, Lord, that affirms these young men in their boyhood, that affirms them, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, in their humanity. I thank you, Lord God, that you're going to put around them the right people so that growth will be consistent in the name of Jesus. We trust you to do it, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Y'all, my sister Reba right there, she's going to connect with you. Listen, family, Woo. if there are others, even after we dismiss, there will be folks down front to meet you at the point of your need. You can take a seat just for a moment. We're getting ready to go. Uh, but before we leave this place, I want to give you an opportunity uh, to give. Uh, in this season, most of our giving is, is done electronically. Uh, we give uh, through PayPal, Cash App, our Macedonia app, text to give. It's all going to appear on the screen right there. Opportunities for you to give. When you give, this is what happens. <laughs> People's lives get transformed. 
people come down and say, I want to get connected. People receive the word that's going to strengthen and transform their lives. When you give, we see the move of God through our church into this community to meet needs. When you give, God has his way. And so we invite you uh, to take that step of faith, giving. Even if you don't uh, have the electronic means on your way out, there are a couple of baskets that you can drop in, a uh, cash or check if you need to give that way. We'd appreciate, we appreciate all the, the, the electronic giving. It makes our finance team's lives just a whole lot easier. Amen? Amen. Let me just pray over every gift and every giver. God, I thank you right now that it's springtime. And I thank you, Lord God, that this is a good ground to sow into. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do in your sons and your daughters and for the way that you're going to grow and develop, strengthen and heal and deliver. I thank you, Lord God, that attach, Lord God, to, to every offering and every gift, Lord God, our, our dreams and, and our hopes and our ideas, Lord God, that are going to bear fruit. And so I pray now, Lord God, that every penny would go to advance your kingdom. I pray, Lord God, that we would see the fruit, Lord God. This is not just for future generations. Yes, Lord God, future generations will see it and they will be blessed by it. But I'm believing, Lord God, that we're also going to see the fruit of these gifts, the fruit of the faithfulness of your sons and daughters in this generation. And God, I pray your provision over them. I release the promise of Malachi 3 that you will open up the windows of heaven and you'll pour out blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. God, I speak over these givers, financial well-being. I speak over them, freedom from debt. I speak over them, over us, Lord God, checks in the mail. I speak over us, acquisition and investment. I speak over us, return on investment. I speak over us, blessing in our children, blessing in our marriage, blessing in our families. I speak over us, blessings and promotion, advancement on our jobs. I speak over us, spiritual growth and spiritual freedom. I speak over us. Open doors in the name of Jesus. As we give, we trust you. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody blessed today? Anybody strengthened today? Anybody encouraged today? Amen. Listen, you can all stand wherever you are. We're going to head out. The awesome thing about using our, our online giving is that anytime you sense, hey, God is calling me to give, you can sow that the work of this ministry might go forward. Again, on your way out, folks at the door uh, to receive your, your envelopes if you got them. I want to let you know a couple quick things. Beginning in April, our Ignite Kids will open back up again. <laughs> yeah. My man Alan was like, yes. <laughs> we coming. We coming, Alan. Alan uh, and so many others of our Ignite Kids did an awesome job in our Black History Month present. Anybody blessed by that? Amen. Yeah. Anybody enjoy that? The kids, the kids, the kids did they thing. You can probably go back still now on, uh, on Facebook uh, or YouTube and check it out if you missed it. It aired on last week, Monday. Uh, so it's a blessing. Uh, Ignite Kids, 9 a.m. and 11.30 will open up uh, at the beginning of April. We will be having registration so we don't run out of spots, so we know who's coming. All right, and so we'll make all that, all those details available to you ASAP. Also, want to let you know uh, that Pastor Mark Tooks, uh, our senior associate pastor, uh, he's going to be taking uh, a month of rest. Amen. Yeah. And 
so we praise God for the opportunity to get some rest. Actually, yesterday was his birthday, and so uh, we praise God for him and for how God uses him in this space and look forward to seeing him even more strengthened and restored. If you have his contact information, don't call him. Amen. <laughs> don't call him, and I'm going to tell him, don't answer. Amen. Uh, because he needs rest. And if we don't demonstrate it from up here, you all will think you don't need it either. But I believe God is bringing us into that space. So looking forward to that. So many other things going on. Make sure you check out our Stay Connected page to find out how you can stay connected. Come on, lift your hands. Receive this blessing. Now unto him who is able to do more than we can ask or think. Thank you, Lord, who is able to grow us in seed time, harvest time, pruning time, and springtime. To him be glory today, tomorrow, and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love y'all. See y'all next week.